It's been a long time. I haven't been on in a while. Just been have, you know a lot of things going on. Just trying to uh, focus on school and uh, work and things like that. But I do want to say that I'm very proud of the, um, of the of the Episcopal Church um, here in America for ordaining uh, Canon Mary Glassfull as the first open open lesbian bishop. Uh, in the Episcopal Church. He's going to be the bishop of the Los Angeles Diocese. Um, I think that's a, a very positive step forward for the church. And I just want to say that no matter what other Protestant denominations say around you, whether it be Pentecostals or Apostolics or Catholics or ultra conservative Episcopalians, I want you to know that uh, this move forward. I do believe is going to have a very positive effect on you guys going forward. Um, you know, Bishop V. Jean Robinson, the uh, uh, the male openly gay bishop in New Hampshire, who was elected back in 2003. Um, you know, of course, caused a lot of controversy um, at that time, and a lot of people thought the church was going to suffer a great deal of fracture. But um, yeah, there are some that left the church. I think maybe a hundred thousand. But nah, that's not really a lot when you talk about the multi the couple million that are a part of the church. Um, let them leave. I mean, you know, just if you believe in prayer or you believe in or whatever it may be, do that. And um, you know, when they they'll be the ones that ten years from now or fifteen years from now, um, when their congregations are sustained at the same size and the Episcopal Church has moved on and continued to grow they'll see that they made decisions in error. There will become a time in this country and around the world that uh, gay and lesbian people will be viewed as the same as heterosexuals. You know, so often we hear uh, language when referring to uh, gay relationships or gay people in general, that's always referred to as a lifestyle or it's referred to as a, or a choice. Um, but when you speak of heterosexuals, you never refer to their marriage or their unions as some sort of lifestyle choice um, because it's accepted as it is a given. And like I've stated before, I don't think anybody in their right mind would volunteer to purposely go through the ridicule, the alienation, the marginalization that we as gay and lesbian people go through on purpose. No one would do that on purpose. So. Um, I do believe that there is room for dialogue, there is room for discussion, and no, I'm not a strong advocate of organized religion or anything like that. However, I do think that, you know, although I may not go to church or a mosque or a synagogue, what have you, I do think for those of you that do, it does have its benefits for your life. Um, you know, it, it does whatever it is that you get when you go and it helps you become a better person at the end of the day, then that's good. You know, you continue to do that. Don't let anyone else stop you from doing it. But at the same time, I think that the the schism that a lot of us are having, uh, the, a lot of the churches are having, a lot of the religious uh, uh, sects are having, based on when it comes to sexuality, I believe that presents room for discussion. You need to. We need to all come together and talk about human sexuality because without a conversation on human sexuality, we're going to remain ignorant and we're going to remain uh, stagnant in our growth. Um, one thing that I often point out is that, uh, you know, we a lot of, especially churchgoers, always cry about, you know, God is love and God is compassionate and Jesus is merciful and this and the other thing. But I honestly don't think that if Jesus were here today, he would approach the uh, conversation about sexuality the way a lot of church people are doing today. Again, I commend the Episcopal Church because they are a, uh, a present day exemplification of what the person of Jesus would have been in this millennium. Um, and again, I just want to congratulate them. I also want to um, give kudos to Portugal. Uh, they've uh, passed legislation to legalize same-sex marriage, even though they are a predominantly Catholic country and the Pope uh, strongly urged them not to do it. Uh, among their own uh, government and um, amongst, their, amongst themselves, uh, 
they decided that this was the best thing to do for the citizens of their country. And as one thing I like, and I wish America would come on board with this, is that we don't live in a theocracy. Uh, you cannot allow your religious views on a subject to dictate how you pass legislation in the world. When it comes to the law, the law is blind. The law sees no religion. The law sees no color. The law sees no sex. The law sees no orientation. The law is blind. And that's why we have Lady Liberty. Because, you know, with the balance scale or what have you, you know, the law is blind. And being, if the law is blind, then our legislators should be also. And when you try to invoke your religious beliefs to pass this legislation, you are violating the Constitution. You are violating your position. If you want to be a religious zealot, then you don't need to be in public office. You need to be on a podium or a soapbox somewhere preaching your views. Um, you have freedom of speech. But when you decide to become a public official, then you need to make laws that are for the good of the entire public. Not for the good of what you think it should be based on your religion, but for the good of everyone um, to promote cohesion um, in our society. And so I, I'm glad Portugal, even though they were urged by the Catholic Church and the Pope himself to uh, not pass this legislation, they did it anyway because they realized, like a lot of other European nations realized, including Canada, Norway, Belgium, Spain, the Netherlands, and um, even Sweden and South Africa, um, or realized that allowing equality is and will promote the good of mankind. Um, I will come back to you with more. Um, I keep continue to watch, and over the next few weeks, I will be uploading videos on various topics. Um, I'm even going to do uh, a question and answer session. If you have questions about whether it be the Bible, um, or even the Quran, or whether it be about atheism or religion or Jesus, whatever it may be, ask me, and I'll give you an unbiased answer and hopefully educate and enlighten you so that way you too can uh, enlighten others around you. Thanks for watching.